In this video, I want to review a site that I created one year ago around March 2023 and at the time of recording this video, it's currently May 2024. So it's definitely been one year since I've done this and yeah. So the website is called Studio Nemco, Nemkea, ne Nemkoema. Um, this is very embarrassing. I, I can't pronounce the name. It's a it actually was called something else, but it actually got renamed. But essentially, if I refresh the page, my task was to turn an Illustrator file into a responsive and functional web flow site. As you can see, we have a preloader effect. Some of the effects, I didn't really do everything. Uh, the client was very, very diligent and like really amazing. So sometimes he went in and he coded a couple of things, even though he is not specializing code. What this site or what this company specializes in is illustration. So it provides illustrations in NFTs, back when that was very popular. I'm not sure if it's still popular. General illustrations and something called VTuber, which I didn't really know what it was, but now I believe it's like an avatar. Um, so that's what he does. He's essentially an artist. He's essentially a studio with a bunch of artists that can create illustrations in a nutshell. So as you can see here, we have the hero section and sometimes it's not the best to lay out a website like this. It really depends on what the genre is. This specific purpose was to showcase a portfolio. So it's for example, for the company to send this website so people can actually see their work or to hire them or to view their price. It's not necessarily for people to go on Google and type in illustrations in Hong Kong or, or wherever the company is. And then this will appear first in the search results. I mean, that takes a long time to, to get that tropical authority and that SEO status. So, you know, just for, for, um, for sakes or for technicalities, technically there should be a header one with the actual name, Studio Nekoyoma, but there is actually no header one in this hero section. It's just paragraph text. So that's not the best SEO practice, but again, it doesn't really matter because that's not the specific goal. It's more of a portfolio site, enough rambling from me. So we just have a hamburger bar on the top left which slides in and has a bunch of items like our team, gallery, price list, terms of service, as well as their social media links. You can see there's also a chat widget at the very bottom left, so you can immediately contact them. They are ready to go. Um, to be very honest, I did not install this. The client did it themselves. Then on top right, we have the logo, and then we just have a bunch of um, main services, NFT, VTuber, and illustrations, and then just a short paragraph text with a black box behind it, just to make sure that it has a separate contrast between this and the background video. One technical aspect of this specific hero section is the background video. This isn't done through native Webflow background. This is actually custom coded and it's actually sourcing off a Dropbox file in order to achieve this high resolution effect. So if I was actually to upload this video in Webflow using the native background feature, the resolution will be a lot blurrier. So that is why it's a lot crisper is through the custom code. It's actually referencing a Dropbox file. Um, here we have a prompt scroll animation, lot of animation. So as the user scrolls down, we have this special effect. I'm not quite sure what it's called. Maybe parallax, maybe card effect. So I actually had to, I'm just to be honest, I had to learn how to code this one year ago, but this is actually very easy to do. I believe it's position sticky, and then you just have a native Webflow interaction that just makes it this specific first card um, scale from 100% to like, 65% while this one is going up. This is the second section, uh, just talks about what the studio is and you can see that it has really nice animations and GIF files when, when the mouse is hovered certain elements. So let's go ahead and take a look at the bread and butter. Firstly, let's go ahead and take a look at our team. So right here, this is done through a CMS where the client can upload additional team members. Everything's very modular. Again, this is a portfolio website showing illustrations. So we, I had to implement a solution called FinSuite Filter and Sort. I think it's a great solution. It's free and all credit goes to FinSuite. But as you can see, if I hover over the mouse, it has this um, effect, this hover effect. And you'll notice, for example, technicality, this is just an image of the artist. Um, Technically, if you want to enhance SEO, you would actually put a separate field in the CMS called their name, for example, like Rocky. But in this case, it's literally just an image. This also helps the client really easily just add stuff instead of you know filling in all these details and it really achieves their goal. So that's something to keep in mind. Another thing looking back, this might be a bit too narrow. So technically this should be a bit wider. It's, it's wasting a lot of screen and it's pretty hard to see, but you know it is what it is and that's just how it's done. 
Um, the great thing about this, again, is everything's done through the CMS. So all this is filtered through the CMS. And when I click onto a specific one, it takes me to that gallery page with it being filtered. So I just clicked on this specific character and it's now filtering artist Rocky in Illustration. So this is the power of FinSuite um, filter and sort. This is using dynamic CMS filter and collections. You can see there's two different um, offering. One is Illustration, one is specifically VTuber. And you can see how powerful the Webflow Webflow is firstly, but mostly the CMS filter. So right now we actually have 136 items and, and FinSuite has done a fantastic job. For example, if we're loading 136 items, that'll take like a long time. That'll affect the page load speed. But you can see we're using Pagnation. So let's just say right now we're only seeing like 12 items at a time. It's only loading 12 CMS items at a time. You can imagine again, if it's loading 136, it will slow the site down significantly. That being said, everything still works. Even the search still works. So I can actually search, let's just say, for example, model. And you can see that it's all working. It's only filtering tags with models, um, like in the text. You can see that you can browse between different artists. So I can actually click into it. You can see what's happening. I can scroll down. I can pick more options like T1. Um, and there's no results in this case. You can click reset all. You can say, I just only want designs. So everything's very modular. Everything's done through the CMS. You can even filter it by created on. So most recent to least recent, that is all done. And that is essentially it. You know, in terms of design, I would like to see this stretched out a bit more and have perhaps three or four column layout, but um, somehow the client made it look like this. So that's what they wanted. But essentially, if you click into one of these items, it either shows a video, a YouTube video, or it shows an image. Let's see if I can find one like so this is an image and this is a youtube video and that way the client can actually see or the potential client slash lead can see what's going on and it also has the social media links of the specific artist right here all done in cms that is essentially the bread and butter main functionality that i just wanted to to just share uh and lastly we just have a bunch of static pages such as the price list right here which can be changed by the client and the terms of service, which can also be changed by the client. So something to note here, back then I was obsessed with using M's, ephemeral units, which is a responsive unit that is based on viewport width or technically based on whatever you want, but everything's actually done through viewport width. So right now I'm actually viewing this in a MacBook, but if I was to put this into an iMac, like a larger resolution, let's say 1920 by 1080, it would look essentially identical. So that is a great, technique that I was obsessed with in the past. I still use um, M's, but sometimes I use REMS, which is a fixed pixel, but that is something to definitely note in regards to creating websites is what units are you gonna build your site in? Is it pixels, is it REMS, or is it something crazy like viewport width? So thank you for watching. Definitely check out the site. I'll leave a link in the description. And if you guys are looking for an artist, this is someone I definitely recommend. Great communication skill, great client, super patient. And you can just tell they do high quality work just based on just looking at the visuals. You, you, sometimes you don't even need to read the website. You just look at the visuals, you know? Reading is just like an option that they can, they can read more. But technically, people will just look at the illustration and the work speaks for themselves. So thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.